Welcome back to That Time When. Matt Miller with you in Studio 4. This is the podcast series where we take you through the archive here at Tressa. Today we're taking it back to the very early days of Trexone back in 2013 when I met Alice Critch. Firing up the satellite once again, it's only a short little hop to Perth from the Brisbane studios. Alice Critch is in Perth for the Revelation Film Festival. Alice, thanks so much for your time. A pleasure. I'm happy to talk to, uh, to, tre to trekkers or trekkies anywhere in the world. Great big family. Trekkers. Trekkers or Trekkies, I, I, I think we, that'll be the next thing I have to investigate as to exactly what we're calling ourselves these days. <laughs> um, so obviously, Alice, you, you came into the franchise with, uh, with First Contact. What, what was it like to, to join this massive franchise that, that is Star Trek and, and to be, essentially become Captain Picard's arch enemy in, in, that, in that movie? Um, I grew up in South Africa and um, television arrived in South Africa the year after I left. So I have this great black hole where cultural references should be. And I had never seen an episode of Star Trek. I'd heard of this thing of beam me up, Scotty, but I really didn't know what it meant. So that was my point of reference. Um, and I was sent the three scenes of The Ball Queen by my agent to learn and go in and do an audition. Um, and my husband and I had a friend who occasionally wrote for Star Trek. And I rushed over to his house because he had some episodes, some Borg episodes. And I watched those and I went in to do the audition. Um, thought I'd done a really bad job. Came out, got in the car and stopped at the first pay phone I could find because of course there were no mobile phones at that point, um, and said to my agent, I've done a really bad audition and please call them and ask them if I can do it again. Anyway, I didn't hear from them for three weeks. And they called and said, come in again, and I got the role. But I had no idea what I was walking into. I had no concept of this amazing extended family that is the Star Trek community. Um, and it has been an enormous joy for me. Um, I, meet, I, meet, I meet us all over the world, um, and there's this instant point of reference, this instant mutual interest. Um, it's, it's been a very, very happy experience. Making it was very happy, and the whole afterlife has been very happy too. I love going to conventions. I love seeing grown-ups in costumes speaking Klingon. I don't think we get to do stuff like that enough as adults. So I love conventions because we're all there in Borg outfits, in looking like Ferengi. I, I love it. I think it's brilliant. Um, do you, I, I had a chat with... Um, Jeffrey Coombs at um, Oz Comic Con in Melbourne on the on the weekend, and and he mentioned that sim similar sort of experiences as, as yourself in in terms of, um, and and he mentioned it as a gauge of how well or how how his work uh, is perceived and and how much how and how loved he is by the fans purely because of people that that um, dress up um, or or get into their costumes at conventions and and are very excited. To, to, to meet the actors at these conventions, at signings and, and stuff like that. Is, is there any, have you ever had a, someone stand out to you at a, at a convention, someone that's, that's stuck in your mind, someone that you've remembered? Oh, there, there have been many. I mean, many people who have made their own Borg suits and come to my table to, to show me. Um, a, NASA, a team of scientists from NASA arrived one day wearing t-shirts saying resistance is futile and they said whenever we hit a problem that feels insoluble we put on these t-shirts which was brilliant <laughs> someone arrived at my table one day and said um, may I take off my t-shirt I'd like to show you something and I thought well 
I'm surrounded by lots of people, so it's got to be okay. And I <laughs> said, yes. And he had the ball queen tattooed across his chest and down <laughs> the side of his body onto his back was this oh, wow. image of the ball queen. I was speechless. I was absolutely floored. So there have been some astonishing moments, yes. But in general, um, it's really lovely just to talk to people, you know, who, whose lives aren't necessarily involved in the film industry, but who, who participate in a joyful, enthusiastic and wonderful way in, in this particular story, the Star Trek story. Mm. Now, of course, uh, Susanna Thompson uh, took over as, as uh, the Queen uh, in Voyager, um, but then you returned for the, for the finale Endgame uh, and also lent your voice to the Armada series of games. Were there any, were there any challenges of picking up the mantle that um, you and Susanna sort of shared as the Borg Queen between series and games? Um, I, I decided when I came on to do the finale that I actually wouldn't watch Susanna's episodes because I, I didn't want to kind of have a, an image in my head, not necessarily of anyone else doing it, but it, it, it's almost better not to have an image in your head, just to be in the moment. But I did read all the episodes, all the Borg episodes. Um, no, the, the challenge for me was a couple of nights before I was due to start filming, it suddenly dawned on me. You would have thought it had dawned immediately, but it didn't. That it was the Borg Queen and two women, as opposed to the Borg Queen and two men. And I, and I called one of the producers and I said, Oh my goodness, um, you know, part of the energy of the Borg Queen in First Contract was a really, really very kind of sexual energy and, and, and I'm going to be acting with two women. And he said, well, I tell you what, just think of her as omnisexual. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I can do that. I can do omnisexual. <laughs> and that, that was, then, then I just went ahead and had a good time. Um, they were wonderful. Um, both of those actresses were truly a joy and immensely generous to work with. And um, I was also working, of course, largely with the crew that I filmed First Contact with. So it was really, really lovely to be working with the same people again after a break. There was actually a, a fourth encounter with the Borg Queen, which was that they, they, they did an installation in Vegas at the Hilton um, that was the Borg Queen, the, the Borg, taking over a spaceship, an, an experimental lab that was in space. And it was, a, it was, it was shot in 3D. And um, you went into this spaceship and were taken over by the Borg as the audience. Um, so that was the fourth time that I actually um, worked with a character. The Borg Queen herself joined me for one of my very early podcasts. I really appreciated that. All thanks to the Revelation Film Festival in Perth. They're still going strong. Uh, they got through COVID and uh, they are back, which is just absolutely incredible. Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, click the card in the top of the video to beam over to catch that interview in full. If you're listening to, to me on a podcast, jump onto trekzone.org, scroll through to the That Time When section, click on Alice Cridge. That'll take you to our official watch page, which has the link to the full interview. For now though, and as always, I'm Matt Miller for Trekzone. Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favourite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trekzone and subscribe.